like this. You're holding a, uh, a machine. So it has interesting problems. First, uh, enterprises are used to getting, receiving physical materials. So their forms will look to you like, you know, bill of uh, a port of lading. How many of you do exports a little bit? What's the port of landing? What's the uh, FOB price? Uh, this price, that price? You're like, does not make sense. You know, this does not make sense anymore. Oh, delivery, delivery. And, and the confusion is just not still here, still here. It's about the image to the also. So, is software a goods or services? Can anybody help me understand that? Sorry? It's a good or a service? It's a service. It's a service. service. But don't, don't sweat it out because even the government cannot figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, they also don't know if it's a good or a service because if it's if it's put on the shelf, they think it's a good, and when they, you make it, they think it's a service, but the, the lines are blurring, okay? The government does not even know today what it is. So, so don't sweat it. Uh, that's why it is confusing. So, some people will say, oh, the government, you know, they want taxes. That's their projected in life. So, they will say, ah, give us both. <laughs> give us a sales tax, give us a service tax as well. We are good, you know, give us more, we, we, don't, we, don't, bother. we don't bother you then. You tell them, no, this is a service, you know. Well, that's when they get angry, that's when the taxman gets angry, you know. You're giving me less. Does not care about what it is. So the, the golden way the, the customs, you know, really figured out how software is, is going to be good, is when you put it on a CD. So the moment you put it on a CD, it becomes good. That's pretty weird, don't you think? Now the value of the CD maybe it may be five rupees, ten rupees, but the worth of software it is carrying may be in crore, right? <laughs> so don't fret it. But that's the nature of the product, especially in the smack area. Cloud, how do you tax it? It's a, it's a good or a service? It's a service. Why? Because I tell you why it is not. Because it's available off the shelf. It passes the test. It is available to everyone at the same price, which is a characteristic of a good, not a service. You can actually order it whenever you want it. Nobody has to do any customization on it, so no man actually touches it. So where is the service? Service, the presumption is you're actually somebody going to do something about it, right? There's nothing. Please. So one difference between software and other product, why this service is you are not uh, transferring the ownership. You are actually giving a license to you. Okay, you are again using semantics, but we can talk about that later. But these are the issues that I am dealing with as well today. Okay. So this is not a government system. Yeah, but the government don't worry about them. They are like run by bureaucrats who have one one idea or the other and then that the whole country should be thinking the same way. That does not work that way. It is true because when you go and buy anything from Amazon in US, it's not a problem in India alone, okay? In Amazon should it be taxed in the state where Amazon is or should it be taxed in the state where it is being shipped? So what is the solution by US government? No. So that uh, the wonderful suggestion is or the wonderful implementation is if you live in the state of New York where Amazon is not based out of, you don't pay service tax. But if you are in Washington state where Amazon is based out of, you pay service tax. Same problem. You can't, you're getting the picture, well, well, why does it get so confusing? Because Amazon when it ships, whose jurisdiction is it? Whose jurisdiction? Is it the place where it is sold from? Who should be getting that money as well? Should it be the state of Washington or should it be the state of New York? Yeah. No, nobody has an answer, don't worry about it again. Nobody has an answer to it. <laughs> so, that's the problem today. Uh, I'm not looking for answers, I'm just telling you the problem so that you can think of those answers. Uh, price. The product is sold at 10 rupees, this bottle is 15 rupees and you already know it. Right? <coughs> 15 rupees, 10 rupees, whatever the price, you already know it, it's standardized. Now our smack solutions. The emergence of premium, take it for free, Google, take it for free, Windows. Uh, not Windows, but uh, Gmail, take it for free, Hotmail, take it for free, uh, Facebook, take it for free, you know, Twitter, take it for free. Welcome to the premium model. But premium not exactly in its absolute sense, in the purest way, that's not purely premium because 
uh, it's completely free. There is no premium on it, right? But there are premium models uh, like which ones? Anybody? Any, any anything? LinkedIn. Um, where you get something for free and then you can upgrade it. So premium models, in-app purchases, things like those. So when you're on the cloud, take this free tier, which is like basic, don't have to worry about it. Take this, Amazon has a free tier, Azure, Windows has a free tier, everybody has a free tier. But when you want something more, you go to the premium model. We never had it in this. Nobody would give a small pack of you for, for this bottle to you for free. Pay for it five rupees, make it more easily ingestible. So take it for free. And then there's this whole premium also hides this uh, model where, uh, you know, the Google model where you just uh, get it for free. You don't know what you are buying, you don't know why they're giving it to you for free. But it's brilliant because everybody likes free. Yeah, and they make money and they go home happy laughing. So you have to think now more than what is obvious because it's not visible anymore. It's not visible. Just think about the intent of the person who's making it for free. So as marketers think about when somebody, so it's very powerful as a, as a marketer, your problem was to actually, uh, you know, cross the, the objections a person has on buying your product. Oh, it's too expensive. Oh, it does not do what I want it to do. Oh, it's not available in the color I want. Oh, it, is, it just doesn't feel right. Oh, you know, my auntie doesn't like it. My uncle doesn't like it. So you have to overcome all these objections to the consumer and tell him why he should still be buying it. Really, that conversation is not about you and the customer. The conversation is about the customer and customer. He is talking to himself. Why I should buy it or why should I not buy it? You are just standing there like probably a, a punching bag. He's punching on you, but really he's trying to convince himself whether you he needs to buy or not. So think of it this way. You've already covered most of the ground when you offer anything for free. If I told you, sitting and standing here, hey, you don't have to do anything. Uh, why don't you come to a party in Taj Hotel tomorrow? People will probably jump at it, okay? Fair enough. Uh, it's something that you're probably used to, so there may be some amount of reluctance. But what if it was slightly more virtual? I will give you 2,000 rupees if you give me your email ID. Okay? You've all, uh, probably you've already surmounted all the objections um, <laughs> in this group, right? There is nobody saying, my auntie doesn't like it, my uncle doesn't like it, my mother doesn't want me to give you my number, email, all that jazz. Is it really 2,000 rupees for it? What am I going to do with that 2,000 rupees is what you should be thinking. And whether I can convert it for the organization into 10,000 rupees is what you should be thinking. So the model behind it is very important. So in smart world, remember all these things. Whenever you get anything for free, just not anything for free. And subscription based. When you've got to own everything before, like I own this computer, I own that car, I own that bag, uh, everything is moved to subscription-based stuff. I own it for one month, I own it for two months, I own it for three months, four months, five months, until the time I need it. That's where it is moved to. So the nature of the product itself has become, or the price itself has changed. It has become subscription-based. You only own it when you need it. So implications again. Uh, promotion. Now promotion there are various tactics. Everybody's talking about them. You probably are aware of them. Content is the new one though. Uh, we've had only sales brochures before that we used to hand out to people. Just take it, take it, take it. Now the consumers have become smarter. Before they arrive at your doorstep, their decision is already made. It's already made because they're Google you, they have kind of seen recommendations about you, they've asked their friends because the reach to their friends has become much easier. It's not that I have to talk to you and I have to come to you to talk to you. I can send you an email, I can send you a WhatsApp message, I can send you a Facebook message and if you're too retro, you'll send an email, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, so that's promotion. The main idea of promotion is move to content marketing. You've heard of digital marketing, I'll give you something new. Content is the king now. Content is the king because people, when they look for information, they're looking for relevant <coughs> content. 
So they want, so you want to capture their attention when they're looking for that content. Because at that time the decisions are made already before they arrive at your doorstep. That's that's significantly different from before. If you wanted to buy Tata, Indica, or whatever, if you wanted to buy a small size car, <coughs> most of the times, and in India, uh, well, they may not, it may not be relevant, but you first go on Zig Wheels, Carvale, and uh, Team BHP, and you know, whatever else. Sorry if I'm using slightly more masculine tools here for my cars, but uh, this is what you would do if you were looking for a new. Uh, Let's say a new cream in town, BB cream. Yeah. How many of you ladies use BB cream? Okay. Uh, a good cream, I believe. Have you have you heard about it? Have you asked your friends? <laughs> Sorry, it's become BB now. Yeah, uh, it's just from the ad. Yeah. So, uh, so people will ask. You know, ladies will ask other women on exactly what is what is this? Is this good? Is it bad? Take a little, little, a little less, uh, you know, um, product. Let's take handbags. Uh, there are forums after forums after forums on handbags. If you go and look on the internet, people sharing, oh, this handbag was good, that handbag was bad, and stuff like that. I mean, I'm just using examples from the area so that you can understand it's relevant in all areas. Okay. Uh, and finally, place. Uh, if you had to buy a car, you had to walk into that showroom. If you had to buy that, uh, you know, uh, what, a Birkin bag, you had to go to a Birkin store to buy it. Well, if you don't have to, <laughs> it's, in snack, you don't have to go anywhere. Yeah, it's available as a service. So where is the place on? What is the place that you're going to? The world world. You're just going somewhere. I mean, and it does not matter anymore because the, the distance is now no more relevant, the time is no more relevant. So you don't have to worry about what time should I open the store, how many shifts I want to open the store. You know, should the, should the ambience of store be clean, dirty, what do I want to convey when a customer walks into that store. These things are different when you're thinking about snack solutions. Snack solutions are not sold in shops, unfortunately. They're sold on the web. This is an IT solution we are talking about. Right? That's why that is different. Places are different. And this, this is just a contrast into what is there and what is relevant for SMAC world. Okay. All right, next one. 